Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with a one 6x6 pad and makes a whole bunch of cards. Um, I should just say like 10 plus, but this is going to make 23 cards today. So I have the Doodlebug Fun in the Sun 6x6 paper pad. Um, during a recent haul video I asked you guys which paper pad you would like to see next and at the time that I started making these cards Fun in the Sun and the Mermaid Pad Under the Sea were about tied. And so this one just kind of came a little bit more naturally at the moment. So that's the one I'm going to share first. But the other ones are coming, no worries. Um, the Mermaid one was probably uh, the winner or like second most. So um, I will definitely be showing that in the future. So there was a quick flip through of the pad. Um, you can check out the haul video to see the other flip through. And I cut up all of the sentiments. There are two papers in the pad, since there are two of each paper. And um, so there are two papers in the pad that have these cut up sentiments. And they also have a little, like those little cards that go with them. I keep calling them journaling cards, but it's not really a, an, an accurate name for them. Um, but they're cut aparts. And so, um, since I had two sheets of those, I'm only going to have two of each sentiment. When I did the Easter one, there was actually four of each sentiment, because um, there was four of each paper. And so I was able to make, when I like come up, came up with the design, I was able to make four of it, which made the process a lot quicker. And for this, because there's only two of each one, I'm only going to be able to make two of each design. And so what I was doing there when I was laying out all those sentiments, and so what I'm doing here as I'm laying out all these little cut aparts, is thinking which ones are best to use. Um, as you know, or if you've watched some of my other videos, I like to donate a lot of my cards to organizations like Cards for Hospitalized Kids, which is linked in the video description below. I kind of like permanently linked it because I talk about it so much, but there are other organizations out there that you can donate to as well. And so I like to think about like what kinds of sentiments make sense for those sort of general happy cards that I like to send. Um, and so... I've kind of picked out a handful of sentiments and put them off to the side, and then I've picked out my most favorite journaling cards, the ones that I definitely want to use, and I put those off to the side as well. So it includes like the aloha and the hello, simple sentiments like that, and um, just other sort of like upbeat general sentiments. Um, I didn't really think I was going to use the happy birthday, but like the thinking of you or the just for you, those would be perfect. And so now what I'm doing is trying to match up some of the sentiments to the cut aparts that I think that they'll go well with. I find that by thinking about this sort of stuff before I start getting, you know, making the cards is beneficial because if I just start like, you know, pulling things out of the pile as I go, sometimes I'll get to the end and things won't match anymore because the colors in the sentiment don't really match the colors in the cut apart that I have left. So it's just a tip if you, you know, definitely prefer things to be a little more coordinated. However, the great thing about Doodlebug pads, and I said this in my last video, and I'll say this in every Doodlebug video I make, is that because the lines are meant to coordinate, almost everything goes well together. Um, there's just, you know, very few exceptions here and there where things don't necessarily pair up as well. So what I'm doing here is I am taking most of the pattern papers from the paper pad, and I'm cutting them down to basically an A2 size card, except for it's going to be um, a quarter inch shorter so that there's a little bit of a border. So instead, an A2 size card folded is five and a half by four and a quarter. What I'm cutting is four by five and a quarter. So I'm cutting a bunch of papers to four by five and a quarter, and those are going to be my, like, you know, bases to build on. And it's going to leave a two inch by six inch strip of each pattern paper and a four and a quarter by one and three quarters or something I'm not really super good with math but like a much skinnier shorter strip a four by one and three quarter I don't know something like that like those small strips and then a bunch of those long two inch strips then I came to this cactus paper and I could make a really large square card with it and I considered that but I just I don't prefer the cards to be that big, and I felt like if I used it for a whole card, 
then there wouldn't be much embellishment on it or layering because it was so large. So what I actually decided to do, and I recommend this to, is helpful in general when making these like bunch of cards with one 6x6 six six pad, is to cut a few of the papers into 3x3 three three squares. And it gives you one more thing to help you with layering. And so since the back of the cactus paper had a sort of neutral print, like it went well with a lot of things, it wasn't too busy, I thought, well, I'll cut it into 3x3 three three squares, and then I'll have 8 3x3 three three squares to help me along on cards. One of the commenters on the Doodlebug video, and it actually might have been more than one in the end, but when I did the Doodlebug haul, they said, I'd really like to see some masculine cards made with Doodlebug paper. And as you may imagine, that can be a little bit of a challenge because Doodlebug does tend to have a lot of feminine prints, a lot of pink. Almost every paper in this collection has a bit of pink. This tiki paper that I'm using, which I think is really, really cute, has a little bit of pink detail. However, I thought, let me first start by picking out the papers, embellishments. Well, they're not really, I mean, they're, it's all paper, but the cut aparts that I felt like were a little bit more masculine. And I'll start there and try to make a few cards that are, if not masculine, at least pretty gender neutral um, and not so feminine. So here you see the backside of that uh, palm tree cut apart. There's a lot of pink and cutesy about it. So I'm going to, you know, I thought the palm tree is a pretty neutral image. Let me start with that one. I'll pair it with this brown paper with the tiki's and then the green palm tree paper. So again, you know, not that you couldn't give it to a female, not that it's super masculine, but just that, you know, this is my attempt at using this particular paper pad that has a lot of arguably feminine elements to make some cards that aren't so feminine. So part of the ways that I say to make it not as feminine, um, and you know, all of that's kind of silly because, you know, some dudes like pink and that's just like, that's fine too. Um, but generally, to use like squared off edges, so rather than cutting a banner there or um, rounding the corners, I kept the edges like really straight. So that was one way that I made it a little bit more masculine on that card. You may have noticed that I used some glossy accents, and those are going to come up a couple times in the video. What I'm generally trying to do with these 6x6 paper pad videos is to add very little extra supplies and the extra supplies I use to be cheap, portable, and like you can use them many, many times. Um, so I'm going to use the glossy accents throughout some different cards and you can use that a whole bunch of times. You get a big bottle for a few bucks. You can bring it with you to craft on the go. Um, and you know, like, Whereas if I were to use a die, you can't really craft on the go with that. They're a little bit more expensive. You're less likely to have the same one as me. So if I have, even if you have a similar, like you have a square die, it'd be a little bit different. So I'm not really trying to like sell you on new products. I'm just trying to show you kind of like what you can do if you just go out today and purchase a paper pad um, with very little extra. So I will also be, as you may have seen, incorporating some foam tape. Because again, that's something that you could pretty easily bring with you to craft on the go. It's um, not quite reusable since like once you use a bit of foam tape, it, it's gone. Um, but you can get it pretty economically and it adds a lot to your cards without having to have any specific fancy supply. So I'm going to add this foam tape behind the sentiments on this card and I added it behind the image on the other card. Again, this is my attempt at a little bit more of a masculine card with the doodlebug pad. There's nothing particularly feminine about the pineapples. Um, there's no real pink or anything involved in it. And so, you know, those first two cards are probably going to be the most masculine, but there's a few more that certainly are as well. I was challenging myself in this paper pad video not to use these two inch strips as banners because I felt like last time I use them a lot as banners and I want to show you another way of using them, some other stuff you can do. I don't want all of the videos to turn out exactly the same so that after you've watched one you're like, yeah, I know what you do with 6x6 pads, you just always make the same card. So I'm trying to mix it up a little bit, position things a little bit differently, but also get the best use of the um, 6x6 pads and one way to do that is to cut as many card bases as you can. 
And so you get left with all these two inch strips. So some different things you can do. Like this time, I picked the, so the, I took the pink flamingo paper for the background of this flamingo cut apart because I liked it being matchy matchy. Obviously you could go with some different patterns if you prefer it to not be so matchy matchy. But I'm gonna go with a lot of pink and green for that reason. And what I'm gonna do here is take that two by six inch strip and use one of them for two cards by cutting it at the three inch mark. So I have a three by two rectangle that I can then layer the cut apart on. And then I used one of those other random four by something. It's less than two inches. That other like strip that gets cut off. And I used one of those for the back of my sentiment. Then I added some glossy accents to the wings. As I mentioned in my other doodle bug video or any of my six by six videos, I like to just sort of play with the different patterns. As mentioned at the beginning, I sort of paired up my sentiments and my cut aparts, but I didn't pick pattern papers for everything, in part because I had some ideas in mind, like trying to create a few cards that were a little bit more masculine. And I'm going to try to lean towards that in a few more cards later, because again, this particular image, this particular cut apart, could be considered, you know, could definitely be used on a masculine card. There's nothing feminine about the little, you know, van and everything there. So you might choose to pair it with some more blues or greens from the line. Here I happen to like the pink and so I went with it. But again, I don't think that pink automatically discounts something from being, you know, sent to a, a boy or a man. And so anyway, I am coming up with a design that uses those little three by two strips you can now make from the six by two strips and some of those random uh, skinnier, shorter strips that are created by cutting the card bases as well and just sort of layering those up together. Um, rather than always using those uh, two inch strips as long pieces by cutting them into rectangles, it gives you a few more layering opportunities. And I think that the glossy accents happen to work out really well with this particular paper pad because there's um, a lot of these really super adorable cut aparts but when you just put them down they look kind of flat and boring and I don't want to make my cards too bulky because I want to be able to send them in the mail however glossy accents don't add a lot of bulk but instead highlight the cuteness of what is already there so instead of having to stamp a scene with a palm tree and a sun and a little car they've put that together for you but you can add a little highlight to it with your glossy accents. I'm actually just using a plain bottle of glossy accents. I don't have that fancy fine tip on the end of it. And I have that on my matte, multi matte medium. I think it's great. Um, but I just wanted to let you know like you don't have to have that. Um, it's a useful tool though. And you might notice that here I'm having a little bit of trouble with my glossy accents. And I used a needle to try to unclog the glossy accents. And if you're ever feeling like your glossy accents are clogged and you want to kind of like push on it a little bit to get, um, to kind of push the clot out, just make sure you're doing that on scrap paper and not over your project because sometimes it releases like a whole bunch of glue at one time and you can't really wipe that away because even if you try to wipe the glossy accents off your project, a little bit of it will stay there and leave a shine. So. Just a tip, um, make sure that if it's ever clogged, you bring it away from your project to squeeze and unclog it. Also, um, you'll see later on in the video, uh, as I pull the glossy accents out again, I have a little hang tag from clothing stuck inside my glossy accents and I keep it there when I'm not using them so that the hang tag sort of uh, stays where the glue would go so glue can't get stuck in there and instead the hang tag's in there. Hopefully it'll be a little more clear later. Um, but if you want me to try to explain it, I, you know, leave a question in the comments. So my next card, I'm going to those three by three pieces of paper that I had created with the large cactus pattern that I, you know, didn't really think I could, I didn't really have a good plan for. And the three by three worked out really well because some of the journaling bits or the cut aparts are also three inches wide. And so I was able to create some really quick layering with that. As you might have noticed, I'm definitely not afraid of these bold patterns that are a part of this particular Doodlebug collection. And I'm really trying to kind of like take advantage of them by pairing some of the bold patterns with other bold patterns. Like 
that little cut apart there had a lot going on on it. But rather than going with a purely neutral background, I chose a background that had a lot going on but was very, very similar. Um, it had the flowers, and so did my uh, my little journaling spot, my cut apart. Here, the cactuses are a little bit more neutral because they're kind of monochromatic here on the uh, base paper, that green one. However, um, you know, that is a pretty, like, clearly patterned paper, and I'm pairing it with more cactuses to, again, you know, I think that because if you if you pair a pattern with something very similar, it doesn't look quite as busy as it might. Like if I put some flowers on this, then it overall might look really busy, but because they coordinate with each other, um, it doesn't seem to be as busy, even though, again, there's just a lot of pattern going on there in this particular card. And I am using multimedia mats sometimes to glue down sentiments. If they're particularly thin, I love to use my Scotch ATG gun because I feel like the adhesive is pretty cheap overall, um, refilling that gun. Although, I, you know, any glue will do. It's just that's like my recommendation if you make a lot of cards like I am here. You know, this the weekend that I worked on this, you know, I wound up with 23 cards at the end of it. So that's quite a bit, and you go through a lot of adhesive doing that. So, you know, that's just one I found economical. And I am using a little bit of glossy accents to highlight that cactus. That's another card that, again, you could arguably say was a little bit more masculine. Yes, there's some pink in that crosshatch pattern paper that I used. But, you know, um, not overly feminine. It didn't have the explicit florals that some of the other cards that um, I've used have. So, at this point, I'm running a little bit low on my cut up my like predetermined backgrounds. I have used most of those, you see there's six left, um, and I have six journaling cards left. So now I'm starting to kind of plan a couple of cards at once because I'm afraid if I do cards one by one, I'll be stuck with a pattern paper that doesn't work with the cut apart that I have. Like if I were to use that hello sunshine with the like crosshatch background and try to pair it with this dot paper that might be a little rough because they're both pretty similar patterns with a lot going on so as you can see i tried to lay them right there together and like that was a little too much it kind of needed something calmer to go with it so i was like well you know let me think ahead let me put my each of my journaling cards down on one of the backgrounds and so that i can feel like you know, I had this idea in mind before I go at it and then have some stuff that doesn't work together at the end. The three by two journaling card is going to be paired, paired with another three by two cardstock piece or pattern paper piece. I'm only using pattern paper from the collection. The only cardstock I'm adding is the white cardstock for the card bases. And as you can see, I'm not gluing them down in the video. I'm just kind of putting it all off to the side in part because I keep putting the glossy accents. So there's that little hang tag. It's like it's from the tag of clothing. And I just place that inside the glossy accents to block the tube so that glue can't get blocked inside of it. And so you might see that I'll like place that little black plastic thing back down into the tube and that will um, keep it from getting as clogged. It doesn't prevent clogs completely, but it helps. So moving on to um, another card. I'm going through all of this really quickly, of course, because you know this video is already over 30 minutes, just to show you the making of all of the cards. Uh, but I want to try to focus on general tips and ideas that are helpful, rather than explaining every little detail of every single card. Um, and there will be a coordinating blog post where you can see each individual card. Most of the cards have two, so if I made one of it, I usually made a second until we come to the very end where like I'm basically running out of supplies and have to get a little bit more creative. So this time I am using the six inch strip more completely and I'm bringing it across the card but I'm trying to use it again just a tad bit differently because so often I brought it straight down the card in a vertical format. Now I'm trying to pull it horizontally across the card but I'm also pairing it with that three by three square just to make it look a little bit different. Generally, I do find that it's easier to tape it down and cut off the edge 
than to measure it exactly because um, sometimes I make a four inch cut with my trimmer and it turns out slightly different than my next four inch cut which is probably more like a user error thing but it's just a personal preference. And so then at this point I was feeling like some of my cards were kind of plain. I thought, well, what is one other tool that I could bring in that really wouldn't add a lot of expense, would again be portable, you know, those kind of qualifications I had for um, my extras. And I thought, well, a corner punch is something that could add just a touch of detail, make it a little bit different because the last time I didn't use a corner punch and wouldn't really necessarily be expensive. You can buy them pretty cheap. Um, I'm using a crocodile, which is a little pricier, but it goes through um, chipboard and things like that so there's you know, the reason for the price however you could whatever corner rounder you have you could add it to the mix and um, you know if you were crafting on the go some people mentioned who watched the last video they really like to craft on the go that um, you could add that in easily or wait till you got home and use the corner punch on a bunch of them before you glue them down so that was another reason it was nice that I didn't glue them all down because I could go back and add details like that later. So I went back to some of my cards that I had created earlier in the video and did the punch out detail. Now, this is one of my very last cards with the um, A2 size background pieces. So I'm getting to the part where I have a lot of scraps going on on my desk. And so I'm trying to start using those scraps and layering them up. You saw that I made that horizontal strip with the um, like orangey mauve, I don't know what you call that color, peach color. Anyway, so I made that little like two inch by two inch uh, scrap by, you know, laying it horizontal and cutting that off. And I said, well, let me just try to use up that scrap right away before it becomes ultimately garbage. Uh, so I created it as part of this little layering with the journal card. So I took a two inch by six inch strip, since I've been using those a lot, cut it in half to a three by two. And rather than just pairing it with a journaling card, I used that other random scrap that I found. And you see there's another random dot scrap that I have for later that will wind up being incorporated. But I find it to be nice to try to create all of your cards in one sitting if you can, because you kind of keep the ideas flowing and, um, you know, you'll kind of see what scraps you're making and what you have left and how it's pairing together. So, um, but you can certainly do it in chunks, especially if you're following a model, like looking at um, someone's, you know, sketches or cards they'd pre-done. So anyway, here I am and I have used all the A2 size pieces and I have a bunch of these two by six inch strips left and some of them match like there's two of the cactus piece, but there's not two of that green piece that I'm layering on top of it because I had cut that up and used it on another card. There's two of the tiki, but not two of the blue. And so I've got to make it look like the tikis are one large piece by um, putting them together to make a four inch piece, two two inch strips together be the four. And so now I can make this appear to be a four by five and a quarter inch, you know, card base piece. However, it's actually taped down the center and I've disguised the bit that's taped down the center by using another one of the two inch strips. So hopefully that's helpful. You can see how you could save some of those and create more card bases later. So I have those two card bases. I have two more of the three by three squares and I kind of have to use the crosshatch pattern because the other side is like random cut apart cactuses. So now I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, like, how do I do this? <laughs> you know, I don't have very much left. I have a lot of these like really skinny four inch wide strips and I'm kind of struggling to be honest. Like I could ignore all of these strips and just place that, um, you know, that piece down on there and, I think that that's actually probably what I wind up doing because I could not figure out how to use those little strips. And I said, well, you know what, um, let me kind of hold off on those. So I have some more journaling cards off the side. I'm like, okay, I could use those. I have a whole bunch more sentiments still. There's like plenty of sentiments. There's even extra sentiments when I'm finished. So I'm going to go back into the sentiments and try to pick some more that I think will be, um, you know, fitting. 
Uh, this happy birthday, uh, which is on the blue dotted paper, it's written in brown, it's actually really hard to read in real life. I don't know, it, it seems kind of okay on camera, but I actually found it really difficult to read. So I was kind of avoiding using it, even though it's great to have birthday cards on hand. But I really like this You Make Me Smile. I thought that was going to be great for cards for donating. And this is where I finally, finally come to those stickers that I showed at the beginning. I decided that this time I would add a sticker pack to the 6x6 pad. As you could see, you could get most of these cards without the sticker pack. And so if you know, if you head over to my blog and look at them, you'd be able to follow along and probably get like 20 of the cards without any stickers. Um, so I think that's a pretty good use of the pack. However, I did find that um, as I got towards the end of some of the paper pads, I wished I had a few more embellishments, and I thought, well, if I add the $2 sticker pack on, it's still a pretty good value. You know, um, $7 generally for the paper pad, and then $2 for the stickers. Although, scrapbook.com has them even cheaper right now. All the doodlebug was on sale last time I checked. Um, I don't know what it will be, you know, when you're watching the video, but I will, of course, link to the products in the video description below, but it's just the 6x6 paper pad and the $2 pack of stickers, and I feel like, you know, again, that was pretty reasonable. So I'm going to go to the sticker pack for these embellishments, and I'm going to pick out a few stickers that sort of pair well with the background paper. Since I used cactus background paper, I pulled out some cactus stickers. Here I used the tiki background paper, so I decided to pull out some of the... Um, well, the tiki drink, and then I paired it with some fruit because I thought that made sense so you could have a little fruity drink. And again, I'm going to come in with that corner chopper or corner rounder and um, round off those corners for a little extra detail. So that's all the pattern paper I've left. Like, I have little journaling cut apart, whatever things, and some random strips, and that's it. I have no more significant size pieces of paper. And I'm like thinking, uh-oh, like I'm done. I don't, I can't make any more cards, except for if I use those little journaling cut-aparts pretty similar to how I did in the Easter video where I kind of put them together in a little square arrangement. But I don't have very many of them left, and they're kind of my least favorite sentiments at this point. One of them says vacation, which is cute for scrapbooking, but is kind of a, a little bit odd for cards and wouldn't make sense to donate to like cards for hospitalized kids for instance because they're clearly not on vacation um so you know i'm trying to be more flexible at this point um or say on vacation so i'm like i don't really want to use that um what i did though is i cut this last card base and i did cut the card base ahead of time because i'm not going to be able to assemble it all without a card base since there's no big pieces of pattern paper left so i cut that to four and a quarter by four five or sorry eight eight four and a quarter by eight and a half and then fold it in half to make a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card if that makes sense um so again there's going to just be kind of a lot of like playing and finagling and desperately trying to get one more card or really one more set of cards since you can make two i have two of each of the elements out of this six by six paper pad and the on vacation I was like, I definitely don't want to use that because I'm not really sure how I'd send that card. So I'm going to flip it over. And that'll be pretty easy because it'll make, you know, just nice solid green square there. And I can incorporate some of the stickers onto it. And this card is going to get super busy super fast. I felt like if I was going to make the two spots to have these pretty detailed journaling cards, they have the saying and they have the little picture on them, um, then I was kind of have to just like, embrace that this was going to be a very busy card and have a lot of pattern on it. And again, because these are all meant to work together, I think you can actually go a lot busier than you can if you're trying to pair papers from different collections or stickers and stamps from a whole bunch of different collections. They're a little bit harder to match. I, um, you know, definitely get a bit intimidated by trying to match them up. But here, it's a little bit easier because they just are meant to go together. So eventually I um, began to get a bit frustrated with trying to cut all of those pieces to match up with each other because it's really hard to cut tiny pieces like that in my guillotine cutter. I love my guillotine cutter because I never have to change the blade and it doesn't fray my edges, but it's kind of hard to cut small things. And so I kept having finagle with scissors and yeah, 
Anyway, I eventually trimmed out those pieces so they fit in a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square with a slight border. And um, then I'm going to start pairing up some of the different stickers into the little green space and the big green space and uh, you know, kind of just calling it a day, letting it be busy, letting it be fun. And so those are my, what I thought were my last two cards, because as you've noticed, I really try to like eke out as many cards as I can. At this point, I'm showing you a few of them that I made. I only had 22 cards, and then I felt like a little bummed about that, because I made 24 last time, and I didn't even have the stickers. So I had more supplies and have made less cards at this point. So again, I'm just going to breezing you through all the different ones, but I had a bunch of the stickers left. And so I thought, let me see if I can make a card with just stickers, like take a white card base and start layering some stickers onto it. And I thought that I could easily kind of create a scene inspired by that one cut apart that has the palm tree, the sun, and the little van. And I was like, why not just recreate that whole scene onto a card? So that's simply what I did. And you know, it's really fast and easy and fun to do. Um, and so I was able to kind of put the sun and the trees and now they over, they kind of overhang on the, um, edges of the cardstock. So I'm just going to turn it over and trim them at the end. You'll see, but I also picked out a sentiment. The sticker pack doesn't have any sentiments, but like I said, there's like a million, um, sentiments inside the paper pad. So I just kind of picked one of those. I think it says you make me happy. You make me happy. And I glue that down with some multimedia mat. And I think it turned out to be a pretty cute card for something sort of just thrown together with stickers. It doesn't look like one of those, like, people call them, like, snickers, sticker sneeze cards. Like, it looks like a really cute little scene. Um, so that is it. 23 cards um, with one paper pad and the sticker pack. And then, like, little tiny extras like um, the glossy accents and the foam tape and things like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Again, I will link the products in the video description below in case you want to check them out. Um, but you can hopefully apply these to whichever Doodlebug 6x6 pad you happen to have. I will also leave all the links to different social media so you can go follow me over on Instagram or um, hang out in my Critter Making Card, Critter Loving Card Makers group on Facebook. And um, that's basically it for me today, but there is a little tiny giveaway. So quick, quick, quick. If you leave a comment, I'll send you what's left of the stickers and a little bit of the dolphin washi tape from the Anchors Away collection, just to say thank you for sticking through these super long videos. But I really hope that they are inspiring and that you will like my video and subscribe so that I can share more of these with you. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.